One of the biggest mistakes people do when starting to work on a new project is spend so much time, a lot of time money as well, working on their project just to launch it and find out nobody really cares about it, nobody wants it, nobody's willing to pay for it. I know because it happened to me. And so on today's video, I'm going to talk to you about what it means to validate your idea, why it's so important and how to do it. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to another week of Wins and Fail where I'm sharing on a weekly basis my progress and learning as an entrepreneur starting my own business. And today I wanna to talk about validating ideas. So here's a quick story. A few years ago, around like maybe five years ago, I worked on an app idea. I thought it was gonna be a cool way to make passive income. So I've developed an iPhone app um, for kind of like cool quotes that you would get like in the morning every day and like just a fancy quote app actually. And I thought at least some people are gonna be uh, willing to pay maybe $1 for that. But um, turned out nobody wanted to download it. Even it was, even though it was a really nice design, nobody wanted to download it and, and sure they didn't know how to pay for it. So that was basically me wasting like five months of my life. And I learned the valuable lesson of make sure people actually want what you're doing before you go ahead and do that. And even though I feel like it's kind of a common advice in people starting out their own businesses, it's still very, very, most people ignore this advice and don't do it because they kind of have the gut feeling that this is actually going to work. I know that people are gonna want this, but the, the truth, I think, the real truth behind it is that, that they're so much in love with their idea and they don't wanna face the opportunity because what if they're gonna turn out nobody wants this, so they're not gonna do this. They don't wanna uh, find out that the harsh truth and so they're like, this is gonna work, I know it, or something like, we'll deal with the marketing when we have the product because uh, right now I can't really uh, test this or something like this. They basically make up excuses as to why not test the idea. Now there is a lot of ways to validate your, your idea, which is you know putting some kind of a core, at least you know a presentation of what you're gonna be working with, showing it to people who might be your relevant um, audience and then seeing how they engage with it. Are they willing to sign up for something, leave their email, actually pay you before you actually do the work? Um, so those are some common ways to um, to validate ideas. Now, after I learned this very painful lesson uh, with the app that I designed and nobody wanted it, um, when I actually launched my first online course, the Webflow Masterclass, actually exactly a year ago, I wanted to make sure that before I work on it, um, people are actually going to buy it. So the way that I did it back then is I basically made kind of an Instagram poll, um, would you like me to uh, build a course? And like 100 people voted for me to develop a course on Webflow. And I said, so there's 100 people, and I, you know, on Instagram, I did a poll on Instagram, and you can literally see the names of the people who voted. So I was like, here's a list of 100 people who said they're going to buy it. So let me say, okay, I'm going to do this and pre-sale it to them before the product even exists. And if at least 50% of those people are actually going to end up buying, that means they're serious and, and they really want this. Um, so I've made an offer kind of like this, I'm going to build this and sure it doesn't exist yet, but I'm willing to give you a really lower price if you're willing to take the chance of trusting me and then you'll get a good deal and you'll have the product when it comes up in a month or two. So this is kind of a basic way to validate your idea. Now, one thing that I kind of went over pretty quickly, but I think it's very important is you have to have kind of a metric um, or some kind of a goal to know if this is a, you know, a fail or a win. So in my case, on the first course, first course that I did, it was 50 people, right? I had the list of a hundred people that I knew were engaged. Still, I knew that I had somewhat of an Instagram following and this YouTube channel. So I was like, I believe that if I'll get 50 people, that shows a little bit of demand. Obviously, you know, this is a pre-sale and not everybody wants to buy a product before it's out there, but it, it will give me kind of a sense of feeling that some people are engaged with it and it's going to be worth my time, um, hopefully. And at least, and I, plus I'm gonna get some money down kind of like before I actually do this. So I'm a little bit 
Like my investment is covered some way. So that was my goal. The problem if you don't have a goal is that let's say three people bought it or signed up for your thing. Like three is that shows that there's a lot of interest, not a lot of interest. So you have to obviously make the numbers um, that make sense to you, but you need to have a goal because again, once we get started, our emotional side takes over and then we're like, oh, it's three people. It means there is hope. If I would only do things a little bit different, probably when I launch this, I, I create a better sales page or whatever, and the engagement is going to be higher. So three is good, you know, because you don't want to give up. And I've already made it. So I'm already invested in this. So you need to have a goal before you get all involved in when you're a little bit, let's say, um, more calculated and, and less emotional about this. So back to last week when I was trying to, again, I said I want to um, create a new course. This one is about web design. And even though now I have an audience that's bigger than what I had last year, now I have already paying customer that already purchased the Webflow Masterclass. So I'm in a better situation to launch it. I didn't want to be kind of like um, taking it for granted that the new idea for the course is going to work as well. So I wanted to go ahead and validate it just the way that I did last time. This time though, I've decided to make this offer only to my uh, limited, you know, group of uh, current students. So I didn't put this offer publicly on YouTube. Um, so basically I have um, a thousand students in my Webflow Masterclass students and I've made the offer only to them. If you want to join, you can do it right now at a discounted price. And honestly, and my goal for this was actually a hundred students. So I was like, if I can sell to people who already bought from me, who are happy with, you know, a course that they already bought from me, if at least 10% of them are not going to buy my next course, I think that it's not such a good idea, maybe, perhaps, even though 10%, I feel is, is a good number. Um, so I've, I've opened up kind of registration for 48 hours and actually the response blew my mind. So in less than 48 hours, over 20% of the people have actually um, purchased the pre-sale to my next course. And then I had to actually close it because I didn't want the, the better group to be too big because I want to make sure that I can give attention to the early students and work with them to develop the content. Um, but I felt like the response was phenomenal. So for me, that is like really an amazing signal that I'm working on something that is really interesting to my audience and people have demonstrated that they're willing to purchase it. And also I think kind of like at least 20% repeat customers, like customers who've bought from you and are willing to buy from you again. I, th I feel like that's a pretty good metric to work with. Um, so, I'm very, very happy about how things worked out last week. I feel motivated and I feel like this, I have kind of a green light to go ahead and work on this and uh, now put all the efforts to make sure that this course is amazing because I know that people are interested in buying it. So main takeaway, do not ignore this advice or ignore it at your own peril, um, peril, peril, they say, <laughs> whatever. Um, you know, make sure that you really try to validate your ideas and validating again, not is not pre-sale is not the only way to validate your idea. You can also do kind of like sign up to a list that will keep you updated on the progress. There is multiple ways to validate, even though pre-sale is kind of like if people are willing to put money, that's like, you know, that's, that's the best that you can have, right? They've already paid for the product. So make sure you validate it so you don't end up wasting tons of time and money. Good luck and I'll see you on the next video.